Hello and welcome back to Oncology for Medical Students. This section of videos is a series of overviews of the most common types of cancer, with this video looking at colorectal cancer, cancers of the large bowel. In each case, these videos will be a quick introduction to the epidemiology, pathology, clinical symptoms, diagnosis and treatment. Firstly, I want to cover epidemiology. In other words, who gets bowel cancer and why? Cancers of the bowel are very common. They're the fourth most common type of cancer behind breast, prostate and lung, making up about 12% of all cancers diagnosed. Non-modifiable risk factors include age, so colorectal cancers are more common in older people, with around 58% of those diagnosed over the age of 70. And also family history is important. That is, if you have a first degree relative, a, a parent, a brother, a sister or a child who has had bowel cancer below the age of 45 or two or more that have had it at any age, you're at higher risk. There are also a number of inherited genetic conditions which increase the risk of colon cancer. These include familial adenomatous polyposis, an inherited mutation that leads to a large number of small adenomas, benign bowel tumours to develop, which all carry a risk of developing further mutations which might make them malignant. In order to, in addition to um, FAP, Lynch syndrome, also known as hereditary non-polyposis colon cancer, is another example of inherited condition linked to bowel cancers. Inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD, that's Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, is also linked with a higher incidence of colorectal cancers. Common modifiable risk factors include the consumption of red and processed meats. Recent studies suggest that those who eat more processed meats have a 70% higher chance of developing colorectal cancer than those who eat the, the least. Obesity. Around 13% of colorectal cancers are linked to obesity. Alcohol and cigarette smoking are also both linked. Next is pathology. 95% of bowel cancers are adenocarcinomas, cancers of glandular epithelial cells that normally produce mucus. In addition to adenocarcinomas, rarely you can find some other types of tumours listed here. Squamous cell cancers form from squamous cells that also line the bowel, but these are very rare. Sarcomas are cancers of connective tissue cells of the body. Most sarcomas found in the colon or rectum are leiomyosarcomas, cancers of smooth muscle cells. Carcinoid tumours are an unusual type of slow-growing tumour, also known as neuroendocrine tumours. These are cancers that grow in hormone producing tissues, usually in the digestive system, and again are pretty rare. Finally, lymphomas, tumours originating from the lymphatic system, are also rarely found in the bowel. Tumors, the tumour types on the right are all treated differently to adenocarcinomas. Most of what we'll be talking about in the rest of this video is with regards to adenocarcinomas. Another important distinction is where the tumour is anatomically. Here we've got some approximate figures, but they give you an idea about where the most common areas are that tumours are found. So we can see 32% are in the rectum, 7% in the recto-sigmoid junction, 23% in the sigmoid, 3% in the descending colon, 2% in the splenic flexure, 5% in the transverse colon, 3% in the hepatic flexure, 7% in the ascending colon, and 12% in the cecum. The reigning cancers were either not specified or spanned different anatomic regions. You can see from the diagram that over 60% of cancers are found in either the rectum or sigmoid colon. So if we imagine the effect the tumour of the rectum might have, we can start to think of symptoms that the patient might commonly complain of. First thing to mention is bleeding. Bowel cancers commonly cause bleeding that is noticed in the stool. If blood is altered, partly digested, 
it may look dark or black. This is usually a sign of a bleed higher up in the gastrointestinal tract. It's important to note that most PR bleeds or rectal bleeds are not due to cancers, but as it is a common symptom of bowel cancer, it should always be investigated. Next is a change in bowel habit. This is also another common symptom. This may be an increased frequency or a change in consistency, prolonged constipation or diarrhea, for example. Tenesmus describes a feeling of needing to pass stool, with little or no stool actually passing, and this can be caused by rectal tumours. Some people might also present having noticed an abdominal mass or weight loss. If you're examining a patient, signs that you might notice include a mass felt on rectal examination, or an abdominal mass felt on ex um, abdominal examination. Patients may also have signs of anemia, which could be confirmed with a blood test as the result of a bleeding tumour. In a man or a postmenopausal woman, anemia is often considered to signify an underlying gastrointestinal malignancy until proven otherwise. Colorectal tumours can cause slow, constant bleeding that leads to an iron deficiency anemia. Bleeding a change in bowel habit and tenesmus are more common with left-sided or rectal tumours. Right-sided tumours often have fewer symptoms and often present with weight loss or iron deficiency anemia at a more advanced stage. To diagnose bowel cancer, the most important test or most useful test is a colonoscopy. This allows the tumour to be visualised and biopsies taken, giving you a tissue diagnosis. In patients who cannot have or cannot tolerate a colonoscopy, something called a CT colonography or CT pneumocolon can be useful for the purposes of identifying tumours. A CT scan is done after inflating the colon with carbon dioxide and a 2D or 3D image is recreated. To allow for a radiological diagnosis and for staging, the CTs are useful in colon cancers to assess the level of invasion and whether there are any metastases. All patients will need a CT to uh, assess for metastases. In rectal cancers, local staging to the extent of the primary tumour is usually done with an MRI. Recurrence of tumours local to the point at which they're excised with surgery is a significant problem in rectal cancers. MRI allows for identifying tumours that are at high risk of recurring and allows better planning for surgery to prevent recurrence. In cases where MRI can't be performed, a transanal ultrasound can also do a similar job. It's worth mentioning at this point a blood test that you may have heard of. Carcinoembryonic antigen, or CEA, is a protein produced by colonic mucosal cells and is often elevated in adenocarcinomas. The test, however, is not particularly sensitive or specific with regards to colon cancer, and therefore is not used as a screening or diagnostic test. It's more useful as a marker of prognosis and for monitoring response for, to, to treatment. In terms of treatment, surgery is the best chance of cure. The aim is to remove the tumour with a clear margin, provided there is no evidence of metastasis. In some selected cases where people have limited metastases to the lung or liver, these may be removed with surgery. Radiotherapy is useful either before surgery to shrink the tumour or after to reduce the chance of recurrence. It can also be used as a palliative measure in patients not fit for surgery. Chemotherapy may also be used as a neoadjuvant, that is before surgery to shrink the tumour, or after surgery to reduce the risk of recurrence, which is known as adjuvant treatment is also commonly used in metastatic cancers. However, this is almost never curative. More recently, drugs that inhibit angiogenesis, the ability for tumors of tumours to grow their own blood supply, have been used in advanced colorectal cancer. These are drugs that inhibit vascular endothelial growth factors, or VEGF, including one called bevacizumab. In addition, drugs that inhibit a growth factor called epidermal growth factor receptor, or EGFR, including one known as cetuximab, is also used. 
So in summary, causes and risk factors of colorectal cancer include age, family history, red meat consumption, obesity, smoking and alcohol. In terms of pathology, 95% are adenocarcinomas and over 60% of the tumours are found in the rectum and sigmoid. In terms of symptoms, the most common symptoms you would find are rectal bleeding, a change in bowel habit and tenesmus. Diagnose, diagnosis includes um, colonoscopy and biopsy for a tissue diagnosis, CT for staging and MRI in rectal cancers for local staging. In terms of treatment, we've discussed surgical options, radiotherapy, chemotherapy and newer targeted therapies. Thanks for listening again. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and have a look at the other videos out there. Um, and we'll see you next time.